I did a video guy, I think it was about two years ago, about uh, expats who end up down and out. And um, it, it's gotten a lot of views and it's been a discussion point I see in, in fact, I just saw it as a discussion point in one of the expat forums on Facebook. And um, so we were talking about this one guy, he, you probably might have seen his picture and anyways, he's an expat and he's just totally down and out, no money, living on the streets, uh, you know, begging for spare change. I mean, it, it's a pretty sad situation. Um, I think he lives out in Dipalog. Uh, some of you may know the guy I'm talking about. Um, and he's not the only one, there's others out there. Um, and, and these are not scammers, these are just guys who uh, have, again, and we'll get into this, uh, just been financially destroyed. Um, now, uh, what I wanted to discuss kind of as a, a secondary video is, is the causes, is what, what is it that led to these guys ending up destitute and homeless? Uh, here in the Philippines. And it happens in Pattaya, you know, it happens in other countries as well. Um, but we'll focus here, like, on the Philippines. And um, so, you know, I, I was responding, in giving my part in the thread, and, and what I mentioned was that it's, it's usually one of three things, three causes, that, that leads to a guy, an expat, ending up destitute in the Philippines. Um, the first I already mentioned in the previous video is a situation where you got a guy who's unhappy in his home country. He comes into a windfall of money, discovers that there's, hey, this other life waiting to be had in the Philippines, and watches a few videos, and he figures, well, hey, I've got $20,000 in my pocket, um, and I'll have another 5000 if I just sell this and this, and, and life is cheap in the Philippines, uh, cost of living is low, and I'll just make a new start there. And, and surely by the time I run out of money, I'm going to have something going financially. They don't know what that is. So they come here. Now here's, here's the problem. Uh, let's say with $25,000 in your pocket. If you're frugal and you live within your means um, and you stick to a $1,000 a month U.S. budget, okay, $1,000 U.S. dollars, so that would be what? God, I suck at math. Was that 50000 or... I don't know. Anyways. But let's just stick with dollars because I know dollars. Um, so you got $1,000 a month to live on. Well, in 12 months, you're going to burn through $12,000. In two years, you're going to burn through $24,000. And after two years, one month, the $25,000 US dollars is now all gone. Now, this is where, again, it's just... I'll label this bad planning, Okay. It's just the inevitable result of bad planning. It was a bad plan before he even bought the plane ticket to come out here. You cannot live anywhere on a finite amount of money that you're constantly chipping away at without putting money back in, without having some other income to replace it, to slow down the you know entropy of that limited amount of money. So that, I just write it off as bad planning. It's unrealistic to think, now, if you've got $2 million and it's sitting in a, a stock trading company and uh, you're, making, you're making dividends every quarter, well, shoot, you probably won't even be able to spend the money fast enough in the next 75 years, you know. Um, but again, even then, you're earning money on dividends. You're earning money on interest. You know, you're not just chipping away at principal. And you're talking about an incredibly large sum. But when you're talking about twenty thousand, forty thousand, even fifty thousand dollars, that's only going to last you a couple years, you know. So, I'm hoping I'm reaching some of you guys that are thinking about this. Uh, do not come here with any lump sum, thinking that you're just going to live on that, unless it's an incredibly large amount, and I'm talking like over five hundred thousand dollars, and you're earning interest or dividends on that money. Uh, because the day will come that you run out of money and then you got no plan. And I know you, you'd think that, that a guy would be sane enough to go, gee, I'm down till my last $2,000. I better use that for a plane ticket to get home, get my act together, and, and maybe earn some money to come back. No. I, I know too many guys who get down to their last $1,000 and they're like, well, I can't leave. I love it here too much. I, I, I can't give up the women. I can't give up the cheap cost of living. I'm just going to stay and hope it works. 
Well, it doesn't. Again, there's, there's no job. It's not like, okay, I'm going to get off my butt and work a job. There is no job for expats. I mean, you know, and if, you, if he was going to earn money, uh, you know, doing something online, he should have started that the day. In fact, he should have started that before he even came out here. So it's crazy, but bad planning is one of the chief reasons why some of these guys end up destitute. Now, second reason. Uh, second reason that this happens is running into a land shark running into a what I call a mercenary Filipina. Um, expat comes over here, he's got income, he's, he's got money, he's got retirement income coming in, whatever. And then he, he meets a Filipina who, and again, it comes down to really just thinking, oh, I've known her for two weeks, surely I can trust her. So within a month or two, he's got her moved in. He has no clue, really, who this woman is. She really is a stranger. Coming back to my constant advice to everybody, which is know this woman for a year. You know, know this woman for a year. And if you're going to have her live with you, it should be because you're already thinking about marrying this woman. And if you're thinking about marrying this woman, again, you should know her for six months to a year before making that decision. Now, here's the thing. A guy comes, he meets a Filipina, and things are hot and romantic for two, three weeks, and he's like, wow, I love her so much and I love this experience. Surely she's gotta be trustworthy. I'm gonna have her move in. So then she moves in, and little does he know that she is a land shark. She is a mercenary. She is out for herself. And she will take advantage of him. She will start copying down his, his ATM cards, his credit cards, she'll start finding out his social security number, she'll start going through the whole nine yards, and before he, and I had a couple guys had this happen to them, before they know what hit them, next thing you know, she's wiring herself money from Western Union using his card. Now, on top of that, you've got guys who were older, like this one guy, I believe he was in Dumaguete, his situation was that he needed medication to kind of keep his mind in the right place. Um, she figured that out. So she just made sure he didn't get his medication, kept distracting him, whatever. Well, pretty soon he was so disoriented, he didn't even know his own way home. So she got control of his banking and everything. And when there was nothing left else to take, she bailed and left him. He didn't even remember the pin code to his ATM. I mean, she, you know, in this second case scenario, you've got a guy who's making the mistake of trusting someone who is still a complete unproven stranger. And so that's just a bad idea, bad idea. And so what ends up happening? First, he loses access to his money. And again, if he's got medical issues, maybe he can't even get to a net cafe or whatever to access his money. If she's stolen all his ID or whatever, he's, again, he's kind of got his no passport, no, no ATM card. She just takes the backpack or wallet that's got everything in it, and he's got no ID, no nothing. I mean, he's really up the creek. And so now he's got to try and reestablish connection with his money, um, and that can be such an uphill battle that he may not make it. He may end up out on the street unable to prove who he is or access his money or even get hold of family uh, to help him out. And so that's the, the second case scenario. Trusting a woman too soon with literally your, your lifeline to your money. Okay, now the third scenario for reasons why this kind of thing happens where guys end up destitute is sort of the opposite. Guy meets a Filipina. She's a wonderful Filipina. She's a great girl. She's not a scammer. She's not a thief. Nothing. She's a really good girl. Okay. But again, he makes the mistake of diving in too quickly, too fast. So he meets her. Two, three weeks later, he's in love. Three months later, he's ready to marry her. Uh, but they're going to put it off, say, for nine months, whatever, because of K-1 visa stuff or because they got to get things together with, uh, you know, they're going to get married in the Philippines, got to do their paperwork and all that, get Cinemars and things. So in the meanwhile, he's only known her maybe three months. He figures he's going to marry her. And 
And maybe he eventually does. But the problem is that in that whole process, immediately, she's not asking for money. He is still in a place of desperation, thinking, I'm going to lose this girl if I don't shower her with money. Because he's still thinking, like, back home. He's still thinking the only reason a, a young, beautiful 24-year-old is going to marry him or have a relationship with him is because of money. Because that's the only way it's going to happen back home. But here, again, totally different dynamics, totally different country, totally different rules. She actually does love him. But he can't believe that. So what does he do? Anytime that the family comes by and says, oh, we could use a new roof for the house, uh, so-and-so just died, we need somebody to pay for the funeral, um, you know, we'd really like to build a addition to the house for you guys, or we need, uh, the brother-in-law would like a motorcycle so that he can be a hubble hubble driver, or better yet, he could use a tricycle so that he can start a business, and the other one wants to start a water filtration business, on and on and on, These, and he is like, sure, yeah, no problem, here's the money, hope it works out, and he is just pushing money out problem is he's got a very small pension and he's got very small savings and pretty soon all that savings is gone and then he's now got to live on whatever small pension he has well now in the Filipina's eyes he's really not the same guy he was before who had a bunch of savings and could live large now he's telling her well sweetie baby we got to get on a budget well maybe she's on board for that but maybe not. And maybe it's just like, you know, he's not really, he's not really viable, you know, like he was before. But the guy ends up essentially broke. Broke. I mean, we're talking about guys that will hand over 15,000 US dollars to a girl. I've run into this. A guy came to me, he gave 15,000 US dollars to a Filipina that he hadn't even met in person yet. And it wasn't that she was a scammer. It's just that he went ahead and trusted her. And once she had that much money in her hands, it was probably a no-brainer. Even if she didn't keep it, the family got it from her. That money is basically gone. It may as well have been thrown into a fan and just blown all over the place. But he never was going to see that money again. And that was half of his life savings. That's all he had was $30,000. Now, he at least could recuperate. He still had fifteen grand in his pocket, and she left, and that was kind of the end of that. But the third category of guys who end up destitute are guys who are not scammed. They just are operating on this fear principle that they think they have to buy and purchase their, the keeping of this Filipina's love. And my advice on that is don't do it. I mean, you know... <laughs> Don't do anything different, in a sense, when you date a Filipina here when it comes to money. Don't throw money at her. I mean, if it's a real relationship, she'll want to be with you, with or without you giving her some huge allowance or getting her an iPhone or whatever. Because, you know, if you don't shower her with money and she leaves because you're not giving her an iPhone, that's the girl you don't want anyway. Okay, it works itself out. Yeah, you want to pay for the movies, pay for the hotels, pay for the restaurants, pay for the taxis, pay for the usual dating expenses just like you would back home. But how many of us, us guys would date a woman back home and just because we've been dating her for two months, tell her, you know, I'm going to start giving you uh, $300 a month. No, no, don't, don't do, do that after you've known her for a year. Do that after she's proven that she's in a real relationship. Do that with maybe a woman you're going to marry. But don't do that with a girl you've only known for three weeks. Because now, even if her heart did start out in the right place, you've just shifted the whole focus of the relationship where money is a big part of it. Now, you'll never know if she's with you for the money or not. So the best way you can short-circuit all that is... I'm not saying be a cheapskate, I'm just saying pay for all the normal expenses you would pay, but don't throw money at her. See if she simply wants to be with you, you know? I mean, 
you can make a general rule. In any given month, if you've known a Filipina for less than six months, the most money that should ever move from you to her in a month should be like $20, maybe $30 most. And that's for paying for her bus fare, her taxi, her phone load, you know, just little things like that. I mean, because if you're still getting to know her, there is no good reason for you to be showering her with a couple hundred bucks a month. There's, you know, again, you're, you're just going down that path of throwing money at her and ending up against these guys get carried away. And next thing you know, they're broke. They're broke. And, and if they're lucky, they're broke and they can have enough money to go home. But if they're not so lucky, and they, they, it's just, they get used to saying yes to every request, it's really not a scam. I don't think it's, I don't consider it a scam when a girlfriend or her family asks an expat, can you give us 20,000 pesos so we can put a new roof on or whatever, whatever's going on? Just because they ask does not mean you have to say yes. You can say, I'll give you 5,000 pesos and then you guys work out the rest. I mean, you can, you can say no. It's not a scam when somebody asks you for money and then you think it through and you hand them the money. That's not a scam. That's just bad decision making. That's operating out of fear, thinking that if you say no, she's going to leave you. Okay? So, it's, it's, some of these guys that end up destitute, it's not because they got scammed. It's because they throw money at a girl, thinking that's the only way they can keep her. And again, the only way you can short circuit that, that thought is see if she will stay with you when there is no, there is no allowance, there is no iPhone, there is no, you know, it's relationship, it's walks on the beach, it's taking time to go grocery shopping together, it's going to her dental appointment together, it's, you know, going to house fiestas, it's spending time knowing each other, not you know, hey, you know, let me, let me, let me support you now and, and hope that you stay with me. That, that's the wrong way to go. Okay, so just a few thoughts on those three scenarios. Um, again, you know, it's, it's just a sad thing to see when, when expats make really bad life decisions that end up leading to uh, destitution because, uh, you know, it's, it's a long, hard trail for family members to be contacted and maybe get money to him and maybe get him flown back. Um, you know, there is no, no support system. There is no safety net for expats really in the Philippines. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just go to the embassy and, and uh, they'll, they'll take care of me. They'll work it out. Uh, good luck with that because the, you know, in the entire Philippines, the one embassy is up in Manila. So your first problem is trekking yourself financially to Manila. And then having an address where they can contact you or a phone, I mean, it, it, it's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, it's probably your one best shot, but um, it, it's not going to be a simple solution when you find yourself, again, just completely broke in the Philippines. Smartest thing you can do, have money coming in. Have money coming in already before you come here. Don't come here with 10,000 in your pocket saying to yourself, oh, I'll just start a business online and then that'll work it all out. No, make the money before you even come here. Okay, so uh, that's about it for today. And uh, again, I wish I wish it was something, you know, happier to talk about, but uh, I just thought it was something to, the, to follow up on. So uh, we'll talk about something else later. All right, I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.